Come with me as we journey into APKs, that's packages for Android, with the Godot engine. Last time I showed you how to export, well, install Godot and export stuff from it, and I tried to confuse you by throwing out way too much information. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about APKs, which are, once you have it set up, are as easy as exporting everything else, but you need a couple of tools, a couple of things from JavaScript, and then if you want to test it out on your device, you're going to want ADB installed as well. And I'm going to show you how to set those up, how to install the things that are required, and then how to export those uh, APKs through Godot. Now, I am a Linux user. This is a Linux channel, so I'm going to be showing you how to do it through Linux using your repositories. Uh, if you are from another operating system, you're going to have to go out on the interwebs and find these things because your operating system probably doesn't provide them for you as, as Linux does. So, to try, try to make this as simple as possible. There's three packages we need to install, and then we just need to tell Godot Engine where these applications are, and then we also need to generate a key uh, because you need that to create APKs that run, even though it doesn't make any sense to me. But we're going to go ahead and do that, so let's jump right in. Okay, here we are with our little test application that we made in the last video. This is a test. Let's go up to Project Export, as we did in the last video, and say Add, and we'll add in Android. Now, we're going to get three error messages. So let's go ahead and have a look at these, or what I've already talked about. ADB, ADB is executable, is not found in the other settings. Again, uh, this shouldn't be required for compiling or packaging APKs, but is required if you want to test down a device through Godot Engine. So we're going to have inst we're going to install that. And then we also need OpenJDK for JAR for signing. And then we also need KeyStore. We're going to have to configure or create some debugging keys. So let's go ahead and install those three packages. I'm going to use my package manager. I'm on a Debian system, so I'm going to use apt. If you're on a Debian-based system, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, anything like that, you should be able to use apt as well. And these are the packages or somewhere there's about. What I mean by that is there are going to be different versions. In the future, you may use a different version than I'm using now, but basically what will change are these numbers. So let's actually look at these backwards. So I'm going to say install ADB. So that's ADB is the Android debugging bridge that allows you to communicate with an Android device through USB or also through the network in some cases. Now, these two other packages are Java packages. So we have open uh, JDK uh, dash again 11 is the version that may change, but uh, if you have that in your repositories, go ahead and use that version since that works for me. If you try another one, it may not work, but if you don't see 11 in your repositories, try a higher number. And we're going to go headless on both of these. What are the difference between these? You'll notice one says uh, JRE and the other one says JDK. You need both of those. So install those. I already have them installed. Once those install are installed, we do need to generate some debugging keys. So we're going to come down here. This is another shell. So one of the tools that that will install is a tool called Key Tool. Now you're going to want to pick a place to put your debugging key so you can use it for multiple projects. Uh, and uh, when it comes to a debugging key, it's not really anything private. Now, if you're going to be publishing your app inside a, uh, you know, the Google Play Store, you're going to have to generate a, a private key, which in that case, you do not want other people to see your information there. But I, I just create a folder in my home directory called keys, but you choose where you want to store your keys because you don't want to lose them, especially, I mean, debugging key isn't that big of a deal, but your actual keys for when you're, uh, your release keys, if you lose them, then uh, Android or Google's going to be like, ah, sorry, you can't update your applications anymore. But this is the command you're going to run. Okay, it's kind of long. I'll put a link in the description so you can copy and paste it. But after installing those other packages, you should be able to use this key tool and mainly copy this as you are. The only thing is you may want to change, although all tutorials kind of say the same thing. Alias is going to be the name of the key, basically. And then the key pass is the password. So we're going to, I'm going to just do Android debugging key and pass. So once we do that, I'll go ahead and enter. It's going to create one called debugging.keystore. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Just remember it's in here and that's what it's called. Let's jump back to the game engine so we have everything installed and the keys generated in here. Uh, what we need to do, now you can specify it for each project, but it's easier just to set your edit up to use those files for all projects so you don't have to do it individually. So let me say what I'm doing here. In the editor, we're going to go to editor, editor settings in this case, and we're going to scroll down here to the very bottom where it says export, and we have Android, okay? Uh, and I'm assuming that this is in here by default. I don't think I put that in there. I think I cleared all my information. But you're going to want to use the user that we put, which in the code I just put is Android debug key. And then the debug key store pass, the password, is Android. So whatever you put in the command line there, that's what you put there. So those are set. But now we want to set up where ADB is installed, which should be in usr slash bin forward slash ADB. Uh, your jar should be, I believe, 
same directory is where it should be. So we're going to say USR bin, and then here we should find jar signer, okay? And that's just a program that's going to sign the applications. Now you want to tell it where you've stored your key, which, like I said, I'm going to have in. Uh, looks like I generated one inside this program before, but uh, we're going to put one for our entire system, which I put in my home directory called keys. Just remember where you put it, and there it is. Now, if you lose that key, you can always create a new package, but like I said, if you're putting it in the Google Store, this is a debug key, but your release key, they will not let you update the application if you lose your key or your password for the key, and you don't want to share that password or that key with other people, but the debugging key really doesn't matter. Now that we've done that, we should be able to go to project, project set, oh, project settings, project export, and now you can see those error messages are gone. You can look through all the options over here, uh, but the main thing you, you're going to want to change here is every Android APK has its own unique um, name, uh, which is, is really weird to me. I don't know who came up with this system. There's a lot of stuff with Android. I don't know who designed it, but it's it, a general rule. It can be pretty much anything you want, but the general rule is it's your website backwards. So if your website is google.com, it's going to be com.google. I don't know who comes up with this stuff. So like my website is films like Chris, but you, you can you can put out something else in there. I don't think it really matters. So my package name is going to be com that films by Chris. In my case, you put in your website or whatever name you've established, and then uh, gen name here is going to use whatever you've named your project. So if you change the name of your project, it will change that. So I called this test or tester, I think. So basically, it's going to create a package, and the application name is going to be com that films by Chris dot tester or whatever I called it and that's it uh, tell it where we want to export it to I'll put it in the bin file here and we'll call it my app my app is going to be the name of the package here um, you can see I already did one of these as a test um, but uh, that's not going to be the name of the program that's just the name of the file once it's installed it's going to be uh, the name that you put here com dot films or Chris and then it will show the name of our application under the icon, which is tester. We'll click export. Yes, confirm that. Yes, override. Did I just already do that? No, it's exporting now. It will create an APK for us, which we then can install on a system. And that's it. So it's on our, our, our uh, desktop computer here. Uh, you can copy it over and install it. You can push it through ADB. If I had an Android device with debugging installed on it or enabled on it, uh, a little Android icon will appear up here somewhere by the play buttons. You click that and you can test your application. It will package it and push it over. It usually takes about 30 seconds. So most of the time you're gonna be testing on your desktop. But then when you wanna test it on that, you click that and it pushes it over and installs it and runs it. That's it. So yeah, uh, quick review on what we did. We installed these packages. Again, I'll put a link to this, uh, you know, notes that you can copy and paste. Again, I'm on a Debian-based system, but you'll want to search your repositories, for whether, whatever system you're using for these files. You should find them, at least some sort of version on them, on most distributions of Linux. Uh, and then once those are installed, they've installed ADB, the jar signer that we have to point uh, Godot to, but it also installed this key gen tool, or this key tool that allows us to generate keys for signing Android applications. That is it. Check out the notes in the description of this video. We're gonna get into more fun stuff in the next video. We're actually gonna create something, not just go over how to set stuff up. These first two videos are a little boring. We're gonna get into more fun in the next videos, but I do thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris K. There's a link in the description as always. I hope that you have a great day.